this has been your age too. Yes, sir. subject that is going to be the hottest subject in the future. Why do you believe in God? And I guess that you in this case also indi indicate myself. And do I believe in God? No. That should make it easy. <laughs> and no one, most of you are shocked. Well, God, she is dead now. She's been dead quite a while. When I needed some food, I went to my mother. When I cried, I went to my mother. When I dirtied myself, I went to my mother. And nobody says anything about my mother. When uh, a man get involved with a woman and a child is born, you've said to the man, you are the father. But when you got an argument with him, you tell him, God is the father of the child. Now, you've been double-crossing. He is the father and God is the father. How? You either went in a bed in the house or in the bush or someplace else. But now you find that God is the father. Now, who is the father? Is it God or is it the man that you went to bed with? Let us examine this thing. There are three gods that you worship in the United States, pre pre predominantly. The first one is the Jewish God, not your God. I know some of you claiming to be Jews and so forth, and uh, as my parents would have claimed, especially my father coming from Ethiopia, would claim as an uh, Ethiopian Jew that uh, Jehovah is God. And at the same time, he says, Jehovah is the God of the Jews. The first Jew in human history was a man named Avram, or Abraham. Avram in Hebrew, A-V-R-M, or uh, Jehovah in Hebrew, J-E-H-O-V-A-H. Abraham was born in the 21st dynasty. I think you should note that down. There were and is 96 pyramids in Egypt. The last pyramid was built in the 20th, 22nd dynasty. That means that if the first Jew was born in the 21st century, how can they charge Moses who was supposed to be born in the 18th dynasty that Moses led the people in slavery against the Egyptian government? And there were no Jews yet. That's the first God of the West. The second God is a God called Jesus the Christ. His mother supposed to have him without the benefit of one man. No man. Just think of it. No man touched her. Yet, in the discussion about the birth of Jesus the Christ, a man was supposed to engage with her three months before the marriage and then come back, didn't touch her and noticed she was pregnant. Then he asked her, who does this situation belong to? She said, you. He said, thou art a what? Whore. That's what the Bible says. A-double-H-O-R-E. -H That's a prostitute who's been going with everybody. 
that she could find. The third, that's, in, that's uh, 1997 years ago. And the third person that we worship as a God, 1300 and 1600 and something ago, was a man in Arabia. <clears throat> and that man in Arabia who found this out to be a fact is called I, I almost say Elijah, but uh, <laughs> Muhammad, Muhammad, <laughs> Muhammad. You you told me he's a camel driver. He was illiterate. He couldn't read the name Allah if it was written in letters big as this building. <laughs> and then you say how he found it out. He went on a carpet. Dung from, uh, from uh, Mecca to Jerusalem. Now, tell me how a carpet operates. If it can him or anybody else. Now, these, these are your definite statement of your belief, how it started. So, do you know, I, now, does the world start with Jehovah? No thousands of years, for at least 4,000 years before the word Jehovah is mentioned any place, where billions of people have lived and died. They were worshiping Yahweh, they were worshiping uh, Ra, they worshiping one thing they worship that you don't worship. They had a goddess. They had many goddesses. What happened to the goddess? Women, you are, some of you are women. Wom aren't women worth worshiping? Yes. Yes. I worship my mother. I wouldn't be ashamed to tell you that. And I hope my father did. He, I think he was intelligent. He, he worshiped her. That's why they beat women so often in the American society. You all call it battered woman. Song pretty, big name. But it's funny that the goddess disappeared, and there's no goddess, not one in your mind. And I ask again, why isn't there any goddess? If there is a god, and there, there should be a goddess for the god, especially when you said that the woman is the mother of God. You said in the Catholic text, Holy Mary, mother of God. If Mary was the mother of God, she is before God. She knew God when she didn't have a seed in her. God was nothing. How come that she became pregnant, got God in her, and then God comes out? This is based upon you. You said, a child born from a mother without a father who is married to her is a bastard, you said. Illegitimate. God, Jesus Christ qualified. He's illegitimate, mate. his mother was married. Second, he's a bastard. His father was married. I did not say this. I am quoting from your text of things that you said. If someone find me to be wrong, please get up and say so now. Tell me the correction so that I may correct myself from the error. If not, I will continue. You said I must believe in God. When I was a boy, my mother, being following the Hebrew religion, she, she did until she died, and my father followed the Hebrew religion until he died. And I followed the Hebrew religion until I get big enough to know better. 
When I was small, a little fellow named Reynold got kicked. And he got ruptured and died. I asked my parents to go to the funeral like most of the other little kids, and my father said I couldn't go. My mother said I couldn't go. Well, that was enough, it meant I couldn't go. And then I asked my father, when it was all over, why couldn't I go? And he said, I was not a Christian, it was a Christian funeral. I said, but I know Renard, we were in the same class. And the kid, the, the kid that kicked him was a fellow Christian and he died. My father's statement with his, to me, was that his God is different to my God. I started to think then, because I thought that all men, they said, it's a difference in philosophy. All men believe in a common God. So then I asked another question, why is God here, Jehovah, God there, Christianity, Christ, and God there, Allah, but no goddess. And I said, yet, God over here has a woman who is the godmother. God over here has a woman who gave birth to him, and she is his mother, and God over here at Muhammad have another goddess over there. All the time I look at God having a mother who is never proclaimed, but is mentioned. And all the time I look over here, the man give birth to a child, a girl child, a mother. And he had given birth to God and no help of a woman. And then I looked at men, including myself, and noticed that a man has no provision to give birth, even a bit of a faggot. <laughs> have no provision made to give birth to anything. That when he is urinating, he have trouble sometimes. So I had to ask myself eventually, it was bothering me all the time, I eventually asked myself, how could a man give birth to a child? There are fellows trying to prove it to me all the time, but I can't see it. I see them switching and doing all kind of things. But they haven't been able to deal with, and no minister, no rabbi, and no imam have I asked to tell me where and who is God. Where can I find God to go and explain to him my problem? And I ask any of you to tell me realistically, what did God do for you? Don't tell me something you dream about. Tell me something that I could see. Don't tell me who you heard, what you believe. I want to see the actual fact. And not one of you in here can do that. Not one. If you're a minister, you can't do it. If you're a bishop, you can't do it. If you a man, if you wear black and white, pink and green, you can't do it. God is a factor that none of us have ever seen. Now, many of you say that you believe in God. I bet you, you can't show me God. And get me, you, you can't prove to me there's such a thing as God. You don't tell me what you believe. I don't want to damn what you believe. You could believe all kind of thing, but prove it. What, where is God? Where we come from? And if God made the world, where was God when he was making the world? If he made it, it doesn't exist, right? And he got to be someplace to make it. <laughs> I ask you, where was God when he made the world? You can't tell me a single place because you're telling me about the world. Have you ever given those things a thought? You never. You believed in God primarily, either your mother or some guardian or the other, or your father, 
told you about God and you see other people believing in that and you were afraid to believe in it, so you follow your parents. Like me. Until I started to examine, without any prejudice, I started to examine what is God? What is meant by it? And I went through some, kind of, some problems because I was afraid at times. I had never asked myself the question that had the nerves to examine what is God. Of course, I have uh, been easy, easy. I've read of books about goddesses in different religions and didn't believe there could be a goddess because a man taught me that a woman would never reach to that point. He never said why. He never give me any reason. It was automatic. A woman can't reach to that point. That's it. <laughs> she can have even God. She make God, but she can't be like God. She, Holy Mary, Mother of God. And then, most of us here, uh, Christians, I assume I may be wrong, but we have heard, some people say, I'm not a Catholic. You are a Catholic. And if you're not a Catholic, you're a bastard proceedings. <laughs> Martin Luther. Martin Luther was a Christian Roman Catholic. He fought against the church that started the Protestant movement. So you came out of the Catholic church. Don't knock it. And then, before you come, became a Christian, 1997 years ago, you were a Jew. The Christians in Alexandria, Egypt fought, and they fighting against the Jews started their own religion out of Christianity. But where did the Jews come from in their religion? You don't discuss that. How is it that they don't tell you where Judaism come from? The Judaism always was Judaism. Was Abraham the first Jew? The very first Jew, Abraham. Didn't Abraham mother worship God? Did she worship any God you know? Did Leah, his, fa his father, worship any God you know? Did weren't those people worshiping a God? And his God wasn't Jehovah? You read that he had a God, but you said his God was a bad God, was no God. He was a no God. Why is he a no God? when people was calling him a god. Because you feel that way. Because you are trained that way. You don't know he, that God was a bad God. People tell you it was about God. When you go to Egypt, many of you are going to Egypt with me and you've gone alone. You see a God. They tell you this is the God. His name is Ra. And the people worship Ra before, before Abraham was born, before his mother was born, before his father, his grandmother's grandfather's great grandfather's great grandmother was born. They were worshiping Ra. Why is Ra incorrect? Why is Ra not God to you? What's wrong? The Canaanites, the, 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 the seven nations of people called Canaan, they had a god, Baal. Why is he wrong? Did he do something to you? Huh? But you never given it a thought. Never once given it a thought. But you said, it is wrong. You never asked what the Pharaoh was. You said the Pharaoh was a group of Egyptians who took the Hebrews. How did the Hebrews get there? You said Abraham was born in the city of Ur in Chaldea. You said so. 
When he was born in Ur in Chaldea, that means in Asia, he's not in Africa. Egypt is in Africa unless I just saw the wrong thing up to last Sunday. <laughs> and Egypt was going along before there was Moses, before there was Abraham, before there was Jacob, before, I keep going all the way. They had a civilization in Africa and all the pyramids. The first pyramid was built in uh, the 3rd dynasty, that's the step pyramid of Saqqara, and the 96th pyramid was built in the 22nd dynasty. No Jew alive, not one, was born. And some lion minister tell me that the pyramid, you're lying if you're telling the truth. <laughs> I mean, I don't know you will call, you may find some other word for it, but I don't know it. And the 96 pyramids, as I said, but something else. You said that the Jews built them as slaves. So build, who built those in Sudan? You don't know the pyramids there? You haven't heard? You got some men in here that have gone to Sudan with me to see the pyramids. And saw the pyramids all over. There are 44 pyramids in Sudan. 44. But you don't know this. Because someone didn't want you to know this. I'm going to stop a minute. All of us, that was including me, never one time had a dream or anything, not even a dream, about God. Because you don't know any format in which to put God in. And to dream about something, you got to know the format. But you come in the next day and say that you have dreamt about God. What is it you have dreamt about? <coughs> Many things we say about God is because we have heard others prattling it. No way have you gone and seen a God. What does God look like? If you have seen the God. Is he black? You are black people. Let us look at the gods that they got. If you were white and Jewish, God is not shown. There's no picture of God. They say God has no picture. He has no color. Now, how can you see something without a color? Picture it. <laughs> Tell me, and I will Analyze it and see if you're correct. Have you seen something without a color? Anything. Not, not only God, it can be anything. I'll accept which what have you seen without a color? All right. Muhammad they said, Muhammad said, God Allah has no color. But it's strange, every time I see in Egypt. And any part of Arabia, I see God and God advocates, they have painted brown. I want to be a little more careful than that. I want my God black. Because there's no doubt I'm black. I have no doubt about it and I'm happy with it. And I used, when I used to have girlfriends, I had my girlfriend black. See, I had no problem because I have no night problem. In the night, I acted with black, and in the day, I acted with black. <laughs> I have no doubt. I have no doubt to make apology to anyone, anytime, anywhere. I operated with black women. And if I get strength again, I go operate with black women. <laughs> So I have no doubt about it. You see? And I don't have these conflict because when I notice 
with the people that runs religions, especially Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, they present their God white and yellow at least. You see, the Arabs are married with a number of black women because at one time since they were traveling from the Karak's mountain, they found it necessary to go with black women. And when they enslaved the Sudanese and other people, they went with black women. So naturally, the woman used no protection. She had babies, none looking like God. It's funny. They all look black. But nowadays, Arabs don't marry many black women. And when they come to your community, they don't deal with many black women. Of course, they may have their little fun, but they're not marrying you. And if you should have little fun, don't marry them. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with what I am saying. I'm, I am saying that treat people as they treat you, with respect. They don't marry you, you won't marry them. All right. Let's go again. God is never shown. Last night or no, two nights ago, they buried an old woman. And her name was Teresa something. But all of a sudden, she became a mother Teresa. I don't know any black children she had. Do you all, anybody here know of a black child she had? How she became a mother? She wasn't a surrogate mother. She never had a child. Never be, why, where did she get the child from? I guess like Mary is an evap evaporated child. <laughs> you see, it's very difficult for me. I'm trying every way. And if you find something I have not said, please remind me so that I, I can examine it and then come up to what you come up as a God. And then you definitely got to prove to me why is there a God and not a goddess? And there are more women than men. And it's a natural behavior of nature. You have more women because when a woman is pregnant, was she getting to one, two, three, seven? She ain't gonna be pregnant a while. She gonna be pregnant at least till a baby comes out of her. In the meantime, to get another woman pregnant, you gotta go with another woman, not her no more. So nature make it that there are more women available to men and men still fighting, beating them up and killing and I can look, I can, not luckily, I can say with pride, I have yet to hit a woman other than a little child, my child. I have yet. I have yet to hit a woman if you believe in God. Then why you hit the child? Go to God and complain. <laughs> this woman is behaving right, God. Do something. But God has never done a damn thing. Never. He never make a man walk in your lifetime. You tell me about Lazarus and all them story tales. <laughs> but you can't show me one person who saw Lazarus got up and walked. Not one. I could tell you a tale, a tale about anything I want and tell you it happened 10,000 years ago. How are you going to prove it? <laughs> you have nowhere I could go and read it, no document, no anything. I don't have to believe your words and you don't have to believe mine. And when you're talking about that and the wars, in Aswan I could carry you to the temple of Isis and saw you, the king being baptized long, long, long before Jesus was subjected to baptism. The king had to be, all kings of Egypt had to be baptized 
by holy water. Holy water made of angst and was, and the was was a, uh, the most secret thing of the king. They had these things that they stole, not copied, they stole it. The Jews, the Christians, and the Muslims stole. You can go to the tombs in Egypt, those that are open and see where they stole it, see where they cut it out, see where they took chisel and chiseled it out. And still they couldn't chisel all. And you go to Egypt and you see it for yourself. Thousands of years before the Jews, when they came and stole from that time they were stealing from Egypt. And you got problem because, well, I don't know. I ain't been there. Go there then if you got trouble. Go with somebody. They got over 30 African people bringing people to Egypt. Some of them don't know what the hell it is just to say, but they, they're bringing them just the same. Skimming them off the top and they have a time in the bar and so forth. And most of them going on the boat having a big cruise down the Nile. Very few of them taking a bus that goes through the village and all over. Very few because they're not interested in that. They're interested in liquor down the Nile. No, but I, you see, I got to tell you just like it is. That's right, that's true. If I could carry, if I could carry you to Egypt from John F. Kennedy Airport straight to Cairo, ten and a half hours, nonstop, in a 747 jet, the latest again, give you Food for 13 days that you're going to be there. Breakfast and dinner in the best class five hotel. They're nothing better than class five. And I could try, uh, take you around with air conditioned bus, even the Mercedes Benz. And then two days, when we're coming from uh, Aswan to Luxor and from Luxor to Dendera and, and uh, Abydos, and back, you get an extra box lunch. That means you get two high-class meals and then carry to all the place on my brochure bar none. And then give you a lecture in the day. And you could, you have an hour after that lecture, question and answer period, and as long as you wish, I will go. The rest of the day is free. And if I could do that and charge you, I began charging you $900. I'm up to $1,500. Because every year, the airline goes up and the hotel goes up. And out of that, give tips to the workers. The, be the, the ladies who work on the bedroom, clean the beds, the, the porters, and, every, and when you come to the airport, you don't carry your baggage. You got people to come to take up the baggage, put it on the, and people to put it on the bus, and you don't touch your baggage. You just put a scripture, a little uh, signature, this is mine, and it comes to your room. For all of all that, 1,500, less than 100 and a dozen, actually, it gonna come out. And if I could do that, and all other people bringing people, they can't do it. But it's the lowest fear in the all of Egypt. Because I don't plan about nothing taking home. I have fun seeing the people have fun. And I go into the village, and you give the people your money or your clothing, and I don't take second-hand clothing. Only the same clothing you will have for yourself. Can these people be given? And still God doesn't have a thing to do with it. <laughs> Those people were poor and poor and poor and more poor. And see them today. The Egyptian government is using Dabud as a center to carry people. 
from the different colleges, the five major colleges, with five branches throughout the United States, I mean the Egypt, the biggest college, bigger than anything you got here, University of Cairo, has 149,000 students per day, graduate students, and then in the night they have the graduate students. And God don't, and they got all kind of thing for God. And God have not shown up once. And thousands of people die each year at the assemblage in Mecca. Some people go there to die. Why God don't save them? They go to die. God never once said to a dying man, don't die, brother. <laughs> oh no, I think they don't know, but I, I could take care of it. I am God. Never yet said it. Nobody ever died from God ache. Heartache, stomach ache. I mean, you could count the things that you die from. How come you don't die from a God ache? You don't get alive from a God ache or God thing all i am trying to figure all the things that happen when you want to save yourself you go to the doctor the doctor send you to the drugstore the druggist give you something that may or may not help where does god come in what does god do when tell me something that god did and saved somebody you know didn't save you right you know, I have to save you, you here. It is nothing you can tell. Tell me of a situation where a man died, a woman too, and returned from heaven or hell, or purgatory, <laughs> any of the system you got, and came back and tell you what happened. You hear all kind of lies, but when I was dying, I saw black light and <laughs> if they were dying, they would have been dead. <laughs> All kind of damn lie about they see flashlight this and flashlight that. <laughs> they were sick, but they weren't dead. <laughs> All these kinds of things we have been taught and we've been taught to make excuse to justify a thing which we are afraid of. We are afraid, and I was too, to a good extent. And still now I have some creepy feelings because, because it's unusual. It's unusual to not love a God. Everybody has a love in a God. And when most atheists die, and they die with a smile on their face, everybody said, he's smiling, but he got to not believe in what do we believe. How the hell he got to believe it? He believes it because he's convinced that there is no God or she is convinced. And the number of people die like that. Emerson, I'll give you just as a name. And I could give you Hamilton Jackson, the Virgin Islands, very permanent attorney. I could give you uh, other people like that. Viso Campo, he had no reason to believe so. These are men who all believe as their parents taught them. <coughs> but they, when they got experience enough, they realize that everything that they believe was caused by a God was caused by human activity. All right, you said that God is responsible for the world. How many worlds are there? Not a world. There are worlds, plural. Is he, is he responsible for those worlds too? And if not, they don't have a God, what they have. Isn't God a figment of man's imagination? Don't we say, I believe in God the Father Almighty? Not I know. Never I know. You see all the buzzes that was there last night or the night before the funeral for Teresa. <laughs> all call upon an unknown God. And they were respectful of the Indian government and the Indian God, the primary God in India. 
And they reminded us that the primary god in India looked like an Indian. And in India, there are 200 million Africans called Dravidians, who would arise many other names they call us. And we were the one that started the religion. We can be in the religion, but the 47th on the list, there are 47 different categories, from the Brahmin down to the least. And we are the least. In every religion, except when we form for ourselves, we are the least. And they shouldn't even let us in. If we're that stupid to join them, we got black people join every religion. If you got a religion to kill them one person every other night, and it's gonna be black, they will join it. <laughs> because they can't afford not to be in it. I walk, look at, uh, ask yourself, any situation that you think you need God. I saw a woman the other day at my favorite hangout, Pan Pan. And I said, I hadn't seen you for quite a long time. What happened, Miss So and so? She said, Oh, I was very sick. Thank God. I said, Where were you very ill? She said, I was in the hospital. I said, did anybody do anything for you? No, thank God. I said, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I said, when you went to the hospital, they test your heart, they test your bloodstream, they test everything, your lung, everything, examine you, right? She said, yes. They give you a place in the hospital, they put different plugs and different thing in you? Yes, they did. I said, did you see God there? I don't know what you mean, I says. I'm going to ask you again. Did you see anyone there that you could identify as God? What kind of question that is? I said, it's a real question one that I would ask anybody. He didn't have to be there, but I want to know if he was there. In your case, because you have never been there in anybody's case. I want to say if you're the lucky one. <laughs> she said, no. I said, but did you pray to God? She says, definitely. I said, and what God tell you in return? God don't talk to people like that. I said, how we talk to people? <laughs> if not like that, how does he speak? And in what language? She said, God speak in a tongue which man can't understand. Then I said, <laughs> what is he talking nonsense about? <laughs> if he doesn't understand why he's talking to you, he know you. if he don't understand, he, you don't understand. I said, in other words, you have felt about God, but what about the doctors, the nurses that attended to you, the scientists and other people? Well, they, they had a role. Did it, did, it, did it cause anything to happen? No, God I said, well, you went there then. You're not going back. She said, if I get sick, I gotta go. I said, you don't have to go. God is anywhere. You don't have to go to the hospital to find God. Stay home, you crazy. <laughs> no, you see the point is that everything I tell her that she can do by herself with along with God, she rejected. But the things that people did for her, every time somebody do something for you and you sit, you said, thank you, Lord. You go to the store, you buy something, the price got cheaper. Thank you, Lord, and he didn't do it with the price. The man who owned the store bring the price down. <laughs> Any way you look, you thank the Lord for everything. And I ask you the most significant one for your baby. 
whether you're male or female. You looking for a baby to look like you. Is it because God made the child? <laughs> now wait now. Did God made your child? If he make it, you should make it like him. Then what happened to the father? Just go back home and watch your child and see you look like God. <laughs> if you look like God, don't I hope the father didn't support it yet. Because if you look like God, I ain't gonna pay a penny. <laughs> you gotta go for the father, God. Let him support his own child. It is a big thing. And both all of us will say things. And remember, none of us said we know God. Who says, I believe in God the Father, maker of heaven and earth. And you know that he made the heaven and earth? Were you there? <laughs> Do you know a time when there wasn't heaven and earth and there wasn't a God? Jehovah wasn't here. Allah wasn't here yet. Jesus Christ wasn't here. And the earth was here. The heaven was here. Ask yourself, because if you don't today and go tomorrow, your son will have the problem, your daughter going to have the problem, your grandchildren going to have the problem to deal with this because this question is the question going to come to man. Man has started to ask you that young people go in the church and you see the behind refuses the drawers. No, just but ask your daughter. Going up to the communion, you could see her drawers and before you see her dress. And we used to ask, we used to say, run behind, lady, lady, you, your slip is showing. And we are afraid to say, tell her that. We tell another lady, please tell her. Her slip is showing. Oh, the morality that we've got is based upon God because we don't have to prove nothing to God. If we had to prove the morality, we were responsible to each other, it would be a different thing. Let's look at the divorce right. It's God. You say what God put together, <laughs> let no man put asunder. And if God put it again, how could a man put it asunder? <laughs> According to you, God got all the power there is. He would bring down his power. <laughs> I got to think of another thing. You know, when you think of it, all of us is in the same problem. Because my parents started me. And I think they meant the best. I couldn't believe that my mother weren't honest with me. I can't believe that she didn't believe this strongly. She went to the synagogue every day. She could get there when she was young especially. And my father didn't know about him uh, more than, uh, well, of course, uh, my father knew no more than, than my mother, but he went to the synagogue as often as he could because he went to the synagogue because it brought him money. If he didn't go to a synagogue or a church or something, nobody was coming to him and then he wouldn't get to practice the law. If he wasn't belonging to a synagogue, the vast majority of people that went to him would not have hired him. Right now, every lawyer, every doctor is a, is a member of a church. His name is sitting up there. He's a member of a funeral parlor. His name is sitting there. It brings money. That's the reason not because there's God. He don't care about God. I mean, he, let's, let's face it. He tell you, sister so-and-so, he call you sister too. Uh, 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 so and so, you, you, this thing and that thing is all about God. And he wouldn't tell you, you can't come here. You're a Muslim, you're a Christian, you're a Jew, you can't come here. I want to deal with Muslim. I want to He don't do that because he shifts to suit who's God. 
And now we come to the real thing. You got Muslim sisters here. Walking down the street looking like pigeon, a, 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 a jet type pigeon with a little hole to see the eye out. <laughs> like she's getting the sand. She got that don't know that that is for the sand. <laughs> I mean, you go, you go to Egypt and you say, most of the people don't wear the, the face cover. The, the sand don't blow that much. But they wear it in Arabia. We always take on everything. Everything we catch from the white people, the brown people, we take it more than they got it. That's to make us look different than you. We can't be ourselves anymore because ourselves aren't popular. The sister did something good. The sister went through that delivery to you among the love. And she dealt with the reasons most of us don't want to be black. I am sad for a person who wants to be black because regardless of Michelangelo, how much he, I mean Michael Jackson, regardless of how much he, <laughs> the, the, the black himself and do all kind of things, he knows that he's black. <laughs> and the girl that got a child for somebody that gave him knows he is black. <laughs> so regardless of what he does, he and uh, the other one, the singer, um, the black singer, the woman there, from Detroit. Rose. Not Franklin, the other one. Diana Ross. I could always spell that ASS, I never get the OSS. <laughs> well, she says she wouldn't have a black man because black men mistreat her. I said, it's true, black men mistreat you, if they did. But white men mistreat white women. I have read most of the battering come from white men against white women because they're more them. <laughs> and I said, we have copied well. I said, don't expect black men to be saint or black women to be saint. We misbehave also. That's why they're jailed. But we've got two things. When independence came to us, it came after ex an experience with white men in control and white women under them. And we see black women as beautiful as they are, and I could tell you, I'm not telling you what God tell me. <laughs> I'm telling you what I prove for myself. Now, they're as beautiful as could be. They may not be able to afford what white women can afford to make themselves stand out more beautiful, but that isn't gonna make me act like a jackass Simpson running with a, a car. <laughs> and I don't care what happened to OJ. He didn't care what happened to me and woman then why should I care about what happened to him? Now you all could go on. Because his mother said that people don't have no color. Well, she don't look like she have no color, she don't look like she exists. <laughs> you see, it has come to the point that I respect my mother. I, but I know something happened to my mother and she knew something happened to her. She knew that she become, became light, light skinned because she was bothered, her mother was bothered by a white man or some white man rather, I'm lucky I don't know the bastard, 
Yes, yeah, a fact. We can't like it when it happened to somebody else. When it happened to us, we have to be honest with ourselves and deal with the truth. If my grandmother or great-grandmother was lousy enough to tell a white man, yes, you could go to bed with me, then I have to be right enough to say she wasn't thinking right. She was crazy. Now it's up to you to draw whatever conclusion you want. But I said my mother liked skin, and she was Puerto Rican. <laughs> when I watch her at times, I want to be proud of her as that black woman. Since you tell me I am getting my race from my parents and my color from my parents and everything from my parents, and I look back, then I should want the blackest woman I see, the blackest man I see. But I can't have that. So I ask myself, why? Because your mother, your grandmother did that to you, your great grandmother. I have to deal with reality. If I speak to my son, I am passing down to him a heritage which I had gotten from my parents. And if he doesn't come black, it is someplace I picked it up. And God can help that. Mama didn't go to bed with God. Grandma didn't go to bed with God or great grandmother. She went to bed with the slave master's son. And the slave master's son have never come to me one day and, and apologize. But all of a sudden, we were ready to kill the people in Congo, the people anywhere in Africa who were fighting among themselves recently. But we forgot the enslavement and the colonization. Well, how they were treated, no better than you. You know how you act because of enslavement, because of mistreatment, that you now think that you're white. Most of the time, we hope that we were white. Unfortunately, we are not. But it's, you're lucky because regardless of how you think, or Diana think, or, or Ross think, or Skips, uh, Gibson, what the hell the name? <laughs> <laughs> the day is fast arising when we will be able in our dignity to realize that we are responsible for our behavior. Right. And no God is responsible for our behavior. God is a feelings by man and not a reality. God is something that block us constantly because we look to God to solve the problem. I got a grandson that went to jail uh, the other day, my daughter's son. He believed he was fighting to protect his sister. A uh, funny man who think he's a woman broke in the window, peeping on his sister. And he struck the man and uh, knocked the man down, but this man got a reputation of being this funny behaving man and many people in the building. But the district attorney said he, did, he wasn't going to persecute him, but he had hit the man when the man was underground. See, he didn't punish him for hitting the man. He felt he had a right to do that. But when the man was on the ground, he struck the man again. The man died after four days, and so he asked for the capital punishment. He got 20 years to life. The irony of the thing is that his uncle, my son, was his lawyer. We are, of course, appealing it, and uh, but had he not 
struck the man, he wouldn't have been in jail. Now, because it's my grandchild, I am supposed to say, he got a reason right to strike the man. No. If the law says, not, and I'm dealing with American law, I realize it's American law. This is the law, and we are bound by that law, then we are dutiful to carry out that law. Since I don't respect any law, I follow them, I don't respect them. I must obey every law in this land. I don't respect them, but I have to obey them. I don't have the power to violate them, and when I do violate them, I pay the penalty. Some laws are made that I don't like, and I'm not going to pay respect, and I pay the penalty. I don't plan to cry about it. I will have to pay the price while I'm under the white man. When I get a place of mine, then we can change the law. But we must understand what we are doing in this society. If you want to believe in the Lord for when they come around and they say you believe in the Lord, go right ahead. But no. Know definitely that there is no Lord that does anything for you. The Lord ain't helping these people that are down here. They're in this building. They're in a big building. Is it because they don't want a big building? No, because the Lord didn't help them. They got to help themselves. And they don't get the bread. The world Lord works in a funny way. You see, the Lord works... In a, the, the Lord isn't so fair-minded that they got more black people in charge of Rome. You never get that wise and intelligent, the Lord see to it that Rome is controlled by white people. The Lord never take white people and put them under black people. The Lord never get that stupid. The Lord got stupid one time and white people went and get real guns and took it away from the us. And the Lord didn't put them back. So until the Lord gets stupid enough, and we should fight for that. Fight against the Lord who helped keeping us back. The Lord kept us from the 1400. You mean the Lord up to now? For 1400 and add to 1900 and add still keep us in slavery, the Lord? Who is helping the Lord? I said the Lord help everybody to gain whatever they want. Then the Lord is helping the white man, or am I helping the white man? Somebody's lying to me about the Lord. And I can't, I can't believe that all the mistreatment I am getting, that it isn't the Lord. If it isn't the Lord, he will stop in the morning. Ask yourself who you've been asking to help you. How come he doesn't help you? He helped your master keep you down. So now, I wait for your question because you got a right to ask me what my view and where I came from, but I tell you, I do not believe I give you the logic behind it. Thank you very much.
Brother Kofi will just share his experience with you. Nice meeting you. Uh, I'm from. Originally, I'm from uh, Ghana, what they call a so called country. And um, when I came up here, I came up with a mentality of uh, a typical African. All right? Um, the man is on top, you gotta hold the woman down. Um, one day I heard Dr. Ben, I heard a tip of Dr. Ben saying, Wake up, black man. And uh, it really woke me up. Because since then, I've been totally different. Because when I saw my ex-wife, and she heard me talk, she said, mm, I wish I had met you when you were this way. <laughs> you know? Because uh, everything that the friend is saying makes sense. We, as I say, we come from the woman. Every man walks around with an umbilical cord. It's from the woman. OK, when I go to the maternity ward, I see women bringing forth men and women. I don't see men bringing forth anything, okay? But we, we inherited a culture from a patriarchal society, and it's been, handed, it's been handed down over and over and over and over. So I started asking questions. And luckily for me, I had a bent talk just one day. You know, I wouldn't say I was lucky, Okay, because I did take what he said, and I started asking myself more questions. So, right now I tell you, I put the woman first. And I follow the woman. Thank you. Well, it's, it's a common thing that uh, I could uh, give you any of the stains that we have, and we see them because we hear them so much. He will tell you that because 10 to 1, he was born in a Christian home, a home where people uh, attest to Jesus Christ. But suppose he was born in a Jewish home or born in a Muslim home, you wouldn't hear that. Just, just that. That if, it, if, if, if there's a God, God would impose upon people a belief. But he can go the next block and join for 10 cents, for 50 cents, join the other organization and don't say that. It will make a difference. Nothing will happen. Dr. Yes. Uh, he was saying that the um, religion concept about no, you got what? The question in here. Yeah, can you hear me? I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yeah. Saying that uh, if there's a God, that why does He freeze the black people, and why does He have us in bondage like we are today? But I see, I wholeheartedly believe in God. Can you turn it up? Can you hold me out a little bit, please? I wholeheartedly believe in God, and I believe that if God would free us all today. Tomorrow, the way people would have is right there. Why do you wait? Wait now. That's since you're making the statement, you believe in God, and that. Why did you say that will happen? What would you say will go happen? No, you said he will have us back and change to the next day.
No. No, the man says that you are it. You see, we're discussing. Cartoon where both of them meet, it comes down and join with the Atbara River, and from the Atbara it runs to Sudan. It, before it, it was called uh, Nubia. It ran to Nubia and then Egypt and into the Great Sea. And uh, Kemet means K-M-T, yes. means black land. Yes. There were parts of Egypt where there were no black soil. And black land is what people call it here. The, more, the, the Egyptian writers of ancient time call it Ta, T-A, Meri, M-E-R-I. Because M-E-R-I, because they use constant and no vowels. Vowels or assume. Vowels are put into effect here and in England. That, the, the history they use here is a history with uh, aspects put into it that has been stated. Okay, yeah, I would like to uh, make a statement that the best thing for us to advance ourselves is to gain as much knowledge as we can by reading instead of going home at night watching Martin maybe sometimes. <laughs> you know, you know, reading and learning about yourself. Change, change your name. Change everything about you and, and become African. Don't just talk about it. Don't just, just go to a, a, a seminar or something. Do it. Become active. Make the changes in yourself. And I, I would like to ask you to um, to expand on understanding of the, the concepts from the pyramids, such as Ra, such as uh, Mu, such as Peru. They was before the pyramid. They were before, before the pyramid. The first pyramid was built by Inhotep in the third dynasty for the pharaoh Zuza, D-J-O-S-E-R. -O -O -E His name is also written S-E-R. And the last pyramid was built by Amen M. Hat the third, and that was in the 22nd dynasty, a total of 96 pyramids covering an area of 10 miles. Uh, I wonder if I can meet that obligation that you put me under. I am not meeting it now. My name is, for instance, Yosef. My father gave me that name. Alfredo Antonio, my mother gave me that name, those two names, that's her two brothers. Right. And Benya Kanan is my grandfather's name. Uh, in, 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 in Parashas, we name our children to suit our grandfather, not our father. Now you say that Alfredo Antonio, I have to change, and Yosef, I have to change. There's a lot of argument of, is Yosef Arabian, Hebrew, or it is, uh, no, it is an African. Uh, no, Yosef is in German. It means Joseph. It's uh, uh, the, the argument as to who it belongs to. Uh, Yekhanan belongs to, uh, it's a question of it belongs to Ethiopia. It's what it's called, called. And it doesn't have a, lingu a, 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 a term to refer to human being. It's a linguistic term. It's a Semitic term. And that's a language. It's not a, a racial group. Oh, Hamatic and Semitic is language. And it's based upon the nonsense of Ham and Shem. Pure nonsense. Right. OK, I was just um, not saying directly to you, but in general, I've noticed that I'm not that old than you. Obviously, more older than me, and probably, and definitely have a lot more experience. But just in my few years, uh, 26, going on 27, and I've just seen that people, although they want to be that black and they say this is this is black and this is cool and this is that, they're still associating with American or quote unquote European ideas, but not really being or um, judging or basing themselves off of African ideas. And the only way to get back to an African mindset is to put it into reality, put it into use by us not sitting around waiting for something to drop out of the sky on us, but for us to be active and learn, become more knowledgeable about ourselves, and do put these practices that the ancients have put into practice for ourselves today. And I think that's the only way we're going to do it. The more we sit around and wait for this person to do it and that person, and this laziness is not going to get anything done. The only way it's going to get done is for us to do it ourselves. And when we... Uh, 
I think that one thing I have I said, and I, I'm going to use this as an example. There was a group called the Grandiosa Models, headed by Brother Brath, Ilombe Brath. Cook had not died yet. It was a group that took the natural human hair, the woman's hair, and put it into natural shape. And it was called, they asked them what hairstyle it was, and they said African hairstyle. For many years, they went around taking abuse in Harlem, mainly because the men abused them. The men didn't like the woman in the naturally combed, oiled hair. Grandiosa models. It became, they couldn't accept it. The woman couldn't accept it. But they wanted to use it. So they called it the Afro. A woman went around using the style, the Afro. No longer African hairstyle. But they got tired of that style. And today, they've gone back to the... Now, they were at another, there were another one now where they got the natural hairstyle cut like a man. You see, as long as we live in the enemy's house, we're going to imitate the enemy. Right. With his clothes, with his styles, the girls, the average girls, got a dress shorter than her pants. And you don't know which, when the pants end or when the drawers end. <laughs> you, you pass on the sidewalk and see them going, going into the minister's church, his daughter. When she, they give him communion, she can't go up there and stoop down. You, you know, we got to deal with, with reality. We make these, I said, I don't make statements. I go to Africa all the time. And I look, I can always go into a place. I don't wear a tie, but I could go into a place and look presentable. I wear African clothes. They, in, in Egypt, this is Egyptian African clothes for a man past 60 years, and I, I dress in them, and I think I look respectable. Uh, I, m my wife, I got a wife for 40, I think 45 years. It's been so long that I forget how wrong we married. And uh, I, I, I have yet to raise my hand at her. Raise my hand at her. Raise it. Just say, I bet I hit you. If I say that, okay, I haven't said that. Much less raise it. Because I realized I don't have to practice it. I don't have to read a book about it. My natural sensibility tells me it is not my daughter at 10, 12 years that I t still think she needs training. When my daughter reach around 15, something around, I will stop striking her. And I don't strike her anyway. For instance, I would never strike my daughter in her rear parts. When she's come big, I always remember to hit on her shoulder, hit on her hand, so never at her rear part because I don't know if she's menstruating yet. You see, I am conscious of that. I don't, ha I don't have to wait to become conscious. I, I have to train myself to do things that I know that an African man is expected to do. So certain behavior I expect of us as men, and I expect of my woman as a woman. For instance, uh, I expect my woman go to act a certain way. I don't expect her not to act a certain way, so that if I come home and she don't act that way, I'm surprised. I'm going to ask her, watch it. What happened? I will be surprised if she don't act that way. I don't teach her. I know she. Ha she, she is my, the mother of my two last children. I got children from 50, 60 years, 
my daughter in Puerto Rico, and uh, my boy here, down to the 30s. I expect her to be the mother of my children with her, the two children with her, and the eight other children with the other women, and all come and call her moms. Everyone that belonged to, I had three wives that died, they call her mom. They call her mom because she has expressed herself to them as a mother. <laughs> See that, so that, how, how they do it? Because I treat them a certain way and she treat me a certain way. Uh, uh, thanks, Coach. Mm. Yeah, and I, um, I, I want to make a few comments. Uh, there are certain things I agree and certain things I don't agree. Now, I, as far as the, um, the statement the gentleman asked about uh, making changes in the past, you know, um, so we can improve ourselves for the next millennium, I, I, I think it's also inappropriate for you to suggest that we should stop running on the road behind the white woman. That is not responsible for the black man's problem. I, I think we can solve our problem by teaching these kids here, these kids, you know, go to the kindergarten school and teach them to get a book to read. Don't be in the streets at night, 12 o'clock at night, running around. Okay? You know, get a computer for your kids. That, that's, that's what's going to change the black man. Not to change the name to some kids. That's superficial. That does nothing. You know, you're, you're allowed to have an education in this country. I mean, you're, you're must. It's an absolute. Okay? Uh, or we, have, we have to change ourselves by, by having these guys who walk the street at night, you know, yeah, I, where I work sometimes, okay, I'm a physician. And I've seen that guy, you know, guys come in the night at 3 o'clock in the morning when, in the, way, when the weather is cold, 30, 30 degrees away. They have to take about three, four pants, okay, to get to examine them. They should be inside, okay, they should be in a book. Should, that, that's, that's where we get salvation. Not from running behind a white woman or white somebody. They have, they, have to, they have to do the things that the society expects, okay, whether or not we agree. Okay, we, we're here, and there are certain things that have to be done, okay? Right. Teach the kids, okay? They, they, they ought to be in their books. They shouldn't be running around and, you know, with some stupid toy. You know, they shouldn't be looking at TV, looking at a whole bunch of white people, you know, on TV. They should be in the books again and in the kitchen. That's, that's where we make the changes. That's where we make the changes. You know, we should be shopping, we should be buying from black people and not running to an Indian guy shop around the corner. You know, that, that's, that's, that's where we change the black community. It's, it's, it's economy, it's money, that's what changes it. Okay, and you know, as, as far as as far as the concept of God, I think the concept of God is very superficial. It's very elementary. The concept of God is a lot more complex than than than, than you portray. Okay, you know when, when a woman goes to the hospital and she has a baby and she doesn't see God, does that mean that there is no God? No, it doesn't mean that. And the concept of God is a lot more complex than that. And I think it's a fallacy that you should sit up there and try to portray the, the idea and concept of God as being so superficial because you can see him and think. Uh, uh, obviously, I mean, uh, a lot of people, different religions have different concepts of God, okay? And, you know, God is a supreme divine being. It's one and the same God, okay? And, you know, that's, that's my comment. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not here to add you. I, I, I mean, this is the first time I've heard here. And a, a lot of the stuff that you that you talk about, I, I believe and I agree. But you know, I, I take you know great offense with your 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 belief in the concept of God. You know, making it so superficial. It's a lot more complex than you know, uh, don't don't go, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> you ag you agree that I have listened. Shh. You agree that I have listened to you like you have listened to me. I want you to express to me what is God. Well, you know, to, to me, you know, God, the, the concept of God, God is a complex concept, okay? God is a supreme being, you know, it's, it's, it's a spirit, you know, that, that, that guides and rules, okay? Uh, it's something that, 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 you know, people have, you know, you know, the, the concept is very complex, and this is the whole concept of God, okay? I cannot explain the concept of God, okay? You can. And, and you obviously don't believe it because you're looking for the superficial exactly. things. You're looking for somebody to come, you know, in the hospital and, and, and do stuff like that. Yeah. I, yeah. I ask you again explain to me God. 
I look, you know, I, I'm not here to, to do anything. You, you are not able to explain God. You don't believe God. I believe God is a divine being. I believe, I believe God is a lot more complex than, than you than you portrayed it there. I mean, if I go to the hospital and do something and I don't see God, does that mean that there is no God? No, it doesn't mean that. But that, that's that's your idea of God. And 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 obviously, um, that I, I respect your idea because there are a lot of atheists who don't believe in God, and you know. Sure, sure, they, they, they will come to that, yes. Doctor, I'm going to ask you one more time. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Concepts, concepts. Can you kindly repeat your opening statement? Because I don't think you heard it open, your opening statement. I said that all concepts of God is I believe in God. Not I know God. And all I'm saying, there is no one has said, I know God. Exactly. None. Nobody. But when regards of his religion, he says, I believe in God. But he has never said, I know God. Okay. Oh, revolutionary radio steer that man. I, uh, I've been a lot from your presentation tonight. I would like to make reference to one of the books you had written a while back, Africa, Mother of the Major Western Religions, mm -hmm. which indicate that, um, that Christianity originated as a developed religion in South Africa before it came into Europe. In South Africa? Christianity. No, you, uh, you must read something wrong of that. I said I was discussing the argument between two, the, the European from Europe and the South African, but I, Christianity came, was made in Alexandria in Egypt. Pantheus and Botius are the founders of Christianity. It was during the period of uh, uh, many of the writers such as Josephus. And Josephus came in 100, uh, before the 100th century. Okay, uh, my question to you is that if, since Christianity originated in South Africa, it must be based on African... No, it was originated in Africa. It was based on African thing. All of the people that you hear talking about religion, they opened the tombs and all of their markings are still there for anybody to come and see. What they scratched out, all the temples, they, they scratched out the writings, for instance, Mary and her child was uh, uh, Isis and her child Horus. They were 4,000 years before Mary and her child. <laughs> okay. Now, um, from, what, from, from what I uh, know of uh, most African ethnic groups, uh, you know, Africans generally had a high regard, but, uh, you know, for the woman. In, um, you know, in, in, in African society. And uh, that must have extended to that philosophy as well. It varies. In each, you see, Africa is a tremendously large place. And when m most of us speak about Africa as a, an, an ethnic society or a country or something, Africa is a continent. And as a continent, it has a varied amount of beliefs. And uh, in most of the beliefs that I know, they have a place for the had a place for the woman. Most African society today has been male dominated. They have they, they have brought the Western philosophy that came to us during during uh, colonialism, enslavement, and now we. If you go to Ghana, every third word is "Thank you, God." Thank you, Lord. Jesus fought Jesus, fought this. What happened to the God there? The God there has gone American. I don't I believe everything comes from something. You believe? Wait. No, I know. I know You know? Nothing just don't happen. All right, how do you believe man and woman came on this planet? I don't believe it. I, I, I know how man make woman and how woman make man. They have intercourse. <laughs> no other way. So you believe that this has been here forever? People just been on this planet forever? I, fo 
as far as I know people and animals, the one have had intercourse with the other, and the resultant happened, a child or an offspring. And I've never seen a God involved going to bed with a woman. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying. You don't say it. I know you didn't say it. But I'm saying, I, I think that, well, I know everything comes no, from something. No. You, do? I, you don't know that. Nothing just, I don't believe it just happened. So what you're telling me is that. When did God have intercourse with a woman? That's what you're saying? When, my question to you is, when did God, any God you know, had intercourse with a woman and a child came as a result? I don't know, I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying That's I, believe, all. I believe man was created by a created being. That consults with all. If you could tell me, if you could show me a woman having a child with a man that produced an offspring, I would say, welcome, I agree. So the reason why you don't think there's a God, because you're saying... That's one of the reasons. Can you show me or can I see him? Something like that. I don't believe you don't have to see somebody to believe it's there. But you believe. You don't know. But I don't know. Man. Well, then that's the. If you could argue with me, if you can show me contrary to what I stated, I said you believe you don't know. And so also you're saying you don't know there isn't a God. Then. I said, I don't know, you don't know of a God. I don't know of a God. And you said I wrong. Now show me a God. And suppose I don't believe in God as a spirit, but I believe in God. I'm wrong. No, I said, suppose a man have a God, but it is not a spirit. Is the person wrong? I cannot, cannot say that the person is wrong. But, but you believe it's not that, he's in a spirit. I, I believe that the spirit. So that those who believe in a God who is not a spirit is wrong? I, I didn't say that they're wrong, no. But, those who don't believe in the spirit, they could believe it because of another word. In other words, if we believe in God is something else than a spirit, it's still right. That depends upon what, the, what that something else is. You see, it, your God is personal. Your God isn't interpersonal. You're saying that the God believe have to believe like you. I didn't say they have to believe like me. I said that God. And suppose he, somebody believe in him and he's not spiritual. What happened then? Then right there you they, you disagree. Okay. You giving you your personal experience. Suppose you're at a, suppose you're Muslim. Let's say you're Muslim. You don't believe in the Muslim God, who wasn't born of a virgin woman. You believe in God was born from a virgin woman. Then you're not a Christian. No, I'm not a Christian. No, not. Okay, then okay, go ahead now. And also it is said in the pyramids, I believe I've never been to Africa to see the pyramids. You have it. it is written, I've heard that it's written in the pyramids that man know thyself. No, it's not written in the pyramid. Well, none of the pyramid, none, none of them. Well, it was written over in Africa somewhere. I read it anyway, books. That man know thyself, or thy real self is God. No, it is a sign in a place up in Luxor, next to Luxor, and in and one of the color, one of the the beam overhead, the word man know thyself exists, but nowhere else. That one place, man know thyself, and not thyself know yourself, but people say thyself because they're British. 
and uh, through the thyself, Shakespeare, and all of it can last it. It's a man know yourself. That's what you say. But that's what you say. They don't say that. They don't say that, and they have the concept of God before you did. But then you're going to come today, thousands of years later, 10,000 years later, and you're going to, make the, you're going to be right and they're going to be wrong. Yes, exactly. Because you say by your own belief, by your personal belief. <coughs> Good evening. I have a, I heard you speak on a previous occasion and <coughs> make reference to the fact that, correct me if I'm wrong, if you're a priest in the Egyptian mysticism. I am a priest of the Egyptian, not the mysticism, no, I never, I never did, wait, wait, wait. If you heard me, you didn't hear, hear me say, I am a priest of the Egyptian mystery system. You heard me say, I am a priest of Egyptian system, not mystery. They're nothing mysterious to us. Question I have regarding that is, is it a religion? And if so, does it have deities and a God concept? Uh, the, 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 mystery, the mystery system, you call it, and we don't <laughs> call it that. It's the craft. It's the craft. A craft is where a, a, a number of men get together to, for the benefit of each other. Does it have uh, 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 sisters and brothers? No, we don't have. There is a sisterhood who have sisters. We don't have, a, for instance, the sisterhood here have a one man, they call him a brother. They call the man a sister. For instance, the Masonic craft here has a sisterhood. And then they have a man that belong to the sisterhood and he's called a sister. We don't have that. The sisterhood have sisters who have the same power in there and they don't admit brothers. There's nothing wrong with that. They have the right to have sisterhood, like we have the right to have a brotherhood. There is things that a woman have to speak to each other. She ne they need to know, share with each other. And there are things we share with each other, we need to know, and they don't have to know. And still, our union is complete. Uh, for instance, my, I have been living with my wife for 45 years. And now I can go in the bathroom, but one time I, I couldn't go in the bathroom. She's, she's a woman 78 years old. But there was a time I couldn't go in the bathroom. Could I say, you're my wife, I, I'm entitled to go in the bathroom too? There's a basic thing she had to discuss with other women and herself that she didn't need to discuss with me and she was my wife. And I come, and I come to find out, discussing with her, she didn't need me at a certain time. I didn't need to, to be with my wife when she is uh, menstruating. And it doesn't do anything wrong. I didn't lose anything. I didn't lose anything. My question though is regarding the, the craft, is it a religion or a practice? It's not a religion. It is a beneficial organization for the members. So with that, it does not have deities or no. No, the, the they have deities, and if they're deities, they're a human being. A deity is a human being gone wrong. <laughs> yes. um, I was just wondering, what is your concept? Oftentimes you'll hear something referring to like, well, this is nature's way of, of doing this, and you know, that there seem to be certain laws that are operable in nature. And I was just wondering what your comments were, or what your thoughts were about that. There is uh, certain things in nature, and human beings, that we are not about to know. Uh, it is, uh, human being was living for quite a while. 
before man uh, get to understand himself. Man has gone through a process. Uh, we learn. We learn different things that we didn't know. We learn things. That, for instance, we're operating in the heart now. When I was a boy, my mother told me, be very careful. You don't throw anything to stab me and mess my heart up because nobody could fix it. Before I became a man, people were fixing hearts, taking it out of the body, take the heart out, put it on all kind of string, look like spaghetti, cut it, massage it, do all kind of thing. Now the fixed heart, they take it from one man and put it on the next man. One time they said couldn't, only God could do it. You remember the thing? Only God could fix a heart. People taking heart out and giving them every day. They even got an artificial heart that work eight hours. They work and checking it to make it work more. But if it work eight hours, it will eventually work more. All I'm not, I'm not bringing attack against people because people get very defensive and something. And when you say, I don't believe in that concept, they figure something wrong with you. But you are still yourself. It's just that the information that you're dealing with daily, and some people, you find that you're dealing with wider information than they are. For instance, if a man traveling over the, over the world and he's studying, he's subject to dealing with wider information than myself or, or equal to myself. If we will know more things, than the man who stay here and don't move and go any place. The fact that the man may have a title, it doesn't mean that he is broad. It may be a title limited to a certain space. He doesn't travel enough to know what's happening. And then when he traveled, he would look at the man funny. But that man is traveling and traveling and learning more things. It is not an attack. It is. It is an attack for the, uh, for the woman. It is an attack against the woman. It isn't for the man. It isn't. It's just a situation. And I look at a woman at a much broader as uh, uh, aspect than a man who's sitting still. He looks at a woman as a colloquial being. I look at her as an international being. For instance, I wouldn't look at a woman and a man wearing the same dress. I'm not that open-minded. And the only reason I'm against a woman wearing a man's clothing, I was brought up in such a society. But I could, if I were brought up in another society where women wear the same thing as men, I would see it that way. We are victims of our society. And God is a prospect that comes from our society. One other question, I'm not curious what you thought about concept of ESP, extrasensory perception, or people, I mean, I have experienced things like that, I couldn't tell you how or why, but if you just get such a strong feeling about something, and either it happens or you walk into somebody else, and, and they think, think the same thing, you might dream something, and that it happens. Well, if you believe in extrasensory perception, have you ever dreamed that your brother is you? Because you you have certain functional parts of your body your brother will never have, right? And that's the existential perception. Whenever you, whenever you dream that your brother is you, let me know. <laughs> yes. Yes, anytime. I saw a brother came in. Uh, a brother looked like Brother Jeffries. But uh, I, I, if you look, you see, people, people get afraid of uh, the concept of God. I try to examine it because they said that. God made me a free man, even those who believe in it. And I got uh, the right as a free man to think of things. They make me subjected to God. But if I do something and then say, God tell me to do it, 
They said, no. I said, how you know? <laughs> how you know that God didn't tell me to do it? But they assume they know everything God will tell me to do. As soon as it's something that they don't like. So, but God like me, tell me to do it. They want to know that, you see, they don't they admit to me they have never seen God because God is a belief, not a knowledge. They tell me that and expect me to believe the opposite. I said to them, I don't believe in it. It may be right, but I don't believe it. I don't, I don't tell them you're wrong for believing it. I say, I don't believe it. And I tell them, show me. One thing I never said, I never tell them they're wrong, go away. I said, show me. And they are going to tell them, I said, show me. And they don't show me yet. I asked him, anyone, like the doctor, he didn't tell me, get angry, and gone. Because he can't show me. Oh, 3200, whatever you want to call it, which, what system are you going to use to build a lodge? I am not a donkey. I'm not a fool. Many of things I read because Europeans wrote it. Why do I have to believe them? They have always written the truth. They are a bunch of nasty liars. And I can't rely on everything they write. I have to prove it for myself. And when I can't prove it, I say it's a damn lie. And most of them scared to say so because they're a bunch of liars too. And I don't care who don't like me. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested that you respect me. Because if I find a lie, I don't care who wrote it. It could be Jesus' grandson. <laughs> and I know a lot don't like me because they believe in Jesus. And if I don't say something that's satisfactory to Jesus, Muhammad, it's a, it's a lie that Muhammad rides on a carpet from Mecca to Jerusalem. How does a carpet fly? <laughs> I mean, I ask you, tell me. Well, well, I believe it. I didn't ask you if you believe it. As to how it flies. You know, they, 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 they don't want to answer the thing. And all, all I ask is a common thing. How can I be wrong by asking a question? I want information to know. If you tell me how to fly and it makes sense, I believe it. And nobody has shown me a carpet flying by itself, going, not even by itself, flying anyhow. And nobody has shown me a, ch a woman pregnant with a child that a man didn't put in her stomach. Yes, sir. Nobody. When I see it, I will say, yes, it is true. Uh, question for me, Dr. Ben. Oh. Um, I just want to ask one small question. Um, from what um, text um, context did you use to get the negative confessions are, that's what we call it, one of, one of the things we call it, but a total 147, if you take the Hebrew commandments, the 10 Hebrew commandments, and you take the 133 judgments, these are the, the judgments we put before you, you get 147. No, it's not that easy. Matt is 4,000 years before the Jews. And m many of the things that they said about Matt, they don't deal with. The Jews only deal with those things that they consider that is uh, come from their God. There are many things that Matt has. For instance, they say, I have not put my foot in filth. And he says, 
look, the, the prohibition, it will cause hell in New York. They said a man should not lay in bed with a man. It's like putting your, your foot in filth. I ain't see them t talking about that. They got more faggot than the past hell of miles. <laughs> and faggot in the church. Well, the Nubians in that area, that part was part of Nubia. Um, Nubia was an independent country until 1500 BC when it was taken over by Egypt. Uh, now, today, Nubia is part, is part of Egypt. The, not, the northern part of uh, Nubia is in Egypt, and the southern part of Nubia is in Sudan. Wadi Halfa and, and uh, Wadi Halfa and, uh, I, I forgot the other part, I remember it some other time. Uh, what is, in, is the biggest part and is in Sudan, it's in Western Sudan. And up to Asut, Asut means water falling over, uh, is in uh, Upper Egypt. Uh, that, ex that portion of land made ancient Nubia bigger than ancient Egypt. The Egyptian history today has become the dominant history because the Greeks went in there. The Europeans did not care about Egyptian history until the Greeks went in. And the Greeks uh, wanted to become wanted Egyptian history to be included in their history and changed the names primarily to Greek names. So for instance, uh, the name Cheops means Khufu. The name Shephen means Kafra. And the name Maserinus uh, uh, means Menkara. That's just to give you some example of how the name On, O-N, means this, the city of the sun. It's called Heliopolis. It means the city of the sun. So most of the names used are Greek names and not Egyptian names. And most people believe they are Egyptian names. And most of the guides cater to the Egyptian name, to the Greek name, because most of the money can't, comes from speaking about it, and they know just enough to cover it. If you go and try to, I, I go and try to find out what is uh, Egyptian, and if necessary, argue about it right there, I get a lot of difficulty. And I have a difficulty. Right now, they have stopped me from going to Dabud. I go to another vill village instead of going to Dabud. Uh, and nobody helped me. Everybody laugh. I got in trouble. I go by bus. I carry my people by bus. I, I fight in there to the best of my ability. But nobody helps, so it's all right. But um, I guess you found this the Nubian Museum that came from open. The what? Nubian Museum isn't open. The Nubian, the Nubian Museum is built but not open. It's open October. They're supposed to open every year. <laughs> Dr. Man, I'm so glad you mentioned about the changing of names. Uh, most of us are familiar with the expression that in the beginning, the word, there was the word, and the word was God. Now, I say that in the beginning, there were certain letters that were not used. In the beginning uh, of what? 4004 BC, I'm speaking of the Christian. Christian wasn't there. Christian began, began 1997 years ago. 
They are using, no, I'm not finished. They're using words that they claim were in use around 4,000. Such as? Such as uh, God, G-O-D. No, the one of G-O-D. G-O-D is English. That's what I'm trying to say, doctor, that these words did not exist. The there was no language God, that had an alphabet with these letters in it. The deity, the deity, for instance, Ra, Amin Ra, uh, 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 Set, and all those terms, and I call God and Goddess, they, those are Western terms. Oh. The Egyptian never used like the term Jehudi, God and Goddess. Like Jehudi with a J in it, like uh, Yahweh, there was no W. No, that's right. They wanna, God is an expression that comes in the English language. Thank you. Thank you. I won't go any further, but y'all think about that a little because we keep saying Egyptian religion, but uh, perhaps the it's more than Ancient Egypt. Egypt didn't have religion. They had uh -huh. worship yeah. of deities. Like a spirituality. So let's not get hung up in this religious thing. Thank you, Herman, sisters and brothers. Uh, the heckler that we had in the corner here will be here next week. Uh, Dr. and Dr. Jeffries is promising he will not generate too much controversy. That is impossible. Brother <laughs> Dooney? Yes. I don't know if you will have a place next week. <laughs> well, it's still warm. It's still warm. <laughs> it's still warm. Yeah. Okay, you know, the doctor found something strong today. <laughs> Sorry, wrong way.